Now is the time to worship. I'm here because of what happened to our nation's future 37 years ago in the Supreme Court. I'm here because of what continues to happen every day in every state in our country. Killing innocents is legal in America and we are killing our future. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this moment in which we have uh, come together to speak for the those who cannot speak for themselves and to make the case that those little ones in the womb are the most defenseless of all and yet uh, our fellow man has seen fit to tear them out and uh, destroy their little lives before they even begin. And we're here to say, stop and enough. At Lord, we ask for your blessing and your guidance in this effort. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that we often say is that uh, God says to us, wherever there are two or more gathered, I'm there with you. And he's here with us now. And we know what we're doing. We know why we're here. We're here to stand for those who can't stand for themselves. And if we don't do it, who's going to do it? So thank you all for being here. One day every time we'll confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. How many of you are excited to be here today? Well, I hope that Northern Virginia and all of Virginia and all around the country, they get to hear about how excited we are to be pro-life and ending abortion. Is that right? Okay. Just as you are Through the efforts of Dr. Alveda King and many of my pro-life friends throughout the country, I believe that we are beginning to make headway. I believe that we are beginning to cause this issue to be politically urgent in our community. But I believe that it's God's desire that it wouldn't be one community, but it would be all of us, arm in arm, faith together, standing for righteousness and justice that can then, and only then, bring down the scourge of abortion in our community. Now is the time to give. When I got involved in the pro-life movement way back in 1989, it looked hopeless. Majority of Americans said that they were in favor of Roe versus Wade. They were in favor of this idea of so-called legal abortion. That's because they thought it was safe and they thought it was good for women. Look how far we've come. Now the majority of Americans believe that abortion is immoral and it ought to be illegal. Abortion is the seminal human rights issue, and certainly the seminal human rights issue of our time. We have the early suffragists, uh, women like Susan B. Anthony, who talked about the issue of child murder. Alice Paul said that abortion was the ultimate human, the ultimate um, devastation for women. And, and the first woman who ran for president, Victoria Woodhull, talked about the issue and understood that abortion took a human life and was an important human rights issue. He will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose I grew up going to rallies and protesting, but on the other side of things, my mother worked in an abortion clinic and worked for Planned Parenthood. And when I was 11, she put me on the birth control pill. When I was 12, she started bringing me to the clinic to volunteer. Fortunately, thanks to God, at that clinic I met not only some wonderful sidewalk counselors who spoke to me while I was working as an escort outside the clinic. I also had the opportunity to read some of the classic pro-life literature, Joe Scheidler's book and a few others. And at that time, although I didn't know Christ and wouldn't come to know him for years, my heart was converted to the pro-life cause. Every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for us, gladly... The Senate of Virginia has been a tremendous impediment for us, but they're beginning to break down the, the old guard Republican block of, of pro-abortion Republicans 
Uh, they used to always combine with the pro-abortion Democrats and block everything they could. But there's a new wave of people running for Virginia State Senate. I'm one of them. Uh, Steve Hunt, who will be speaking, is one of them. Uh, please get behind Steve and folks like that. We've got to retake the Senate, and then we've got to use the Senate as a mechanism to begin to force abortion back in Virginia. God bless you all. Thank you. Now is the time to give your heart. On the 3rd of July, in the year of our Lord Jesus, 1776, I gave these words to the American army. The fate of unborn millions will now depend under God on the conduct and courage of this army. This army means all of you and me. And I am known as a prayer warrior. And it's one thing to kneel and pray for the unborn as we should every day, morning and evening as I did, praying for the future of America. But we should also get up and march forth to victory. My life flows on in endless song Above Earth's lamentation I have three adopted younger brothers with Down syndrome. And I don't know if any of you know that 90% of children with Down syndrome are aborted. Every time I say that, I, I get a little teary-eyed because you know, they mean so much to me and have shaped me into what I am today. And some of you may know that um, I actually took a trip to Hollywood because um, I was on this season's American Idol. And, you know, I never really thought about trying out before, but I felt led by God to go there. And when I was there, I think the most important thing that happened to me there was when I made a producer cry, when I said those words, 90% of children with Down syndrome are aborted. And the producer started crying. And I think that that's really why I was meant to go there. Because even if I touched, you know, one person by saying that, that's, that might be one, one child's life that was saved. As you get involved right here in Northern Virginia, you need to be praying in front of the abortion facilities counseling women and providing them with the material resources they need every day in pregnancy resource centers. Vote for pro-life candidates. And the Founding Fathers listed the most significant rights of all men, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in that order. The first inalienable right, life. I was 19 years old when I became pregnant to someone I had been dating for about a year. When I told him I was pregnant, he revealed to me that he didn't want anything to do with a baby. I was devastated. Too scared to tell my parents, I turned to a local Planned Parenthood for help and advice. What Planned Parenthood did was take advantage of my distress. And I believed in what I know now were a web of lies. I am running in Washington, D.C as delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives. This is an unprecedented occasion in the belly of the beast. This is where Roe versus Wade started and this is where it will end. I'm another one of those mothers who had an abortion in 1981 and I know exactly what's behind the slogans of safe and legal abortion. I know that they're always a lie I know that they always leave mothers and their babies hanging in the balance and fathers out in the cold. I understand that every abortion is in fact a death in the family and that our society can and must do better than nearly a million and a half abortions a year as a way to solve personal and social problems. All the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. And though the darkness round me close, how can I keep from singing?